You don't need to be an expert to be able to identify a fake and a real gold sovereign. Now we're all after a little bit of gold, we all like to invest in it. If we go around the flea markets, car boot sales things, then we all try and buy a bit of gold cheap. But there's a lot of fake coins out there. So I'm gonna show you some very, very simple steps on how to identify a fake and a real gold sovereign. And anybody can do it. You really do not need to be an expert. A little bit of background on myself. I'm an antique dealer. Um, I have a little antique shop in South Wales, United Kingdom. I buy and sell absolutely anything I can. And I gotta be very careful when people bring stuff to my shop to sell, you'd be surprised how many people try and come in and sell me fake. So I'm putting my own money on the line, so I have to be right. So I'm gonna show you some simple steps on how to determine if a gold sovereign is real or fake. Stick around. Okay, so here we have two seemingly real sovereigns. So, do you know which of these is fake and which of these is real? Now, this one was brought in to me in a case, a proof sovereign. And this one was brought in just as a sovereign in loose coins. Now, first comparison, you can see there's a color difference. Now, you can't always go by that for the plain and simple reason gold discolors or gets a patina when it's exposed to oxygen. So they could both be potentially real. They both look gold, albeit one is a lot cleaner than the other. So then we're going to compare them for size. And on size, they're identical. They are both the same diameter. They're both quality. They, fair enough, they're different people, but they're different ages. They've both got a milled edge. You can see the milled edge down here. However, one is slightly thicker than the other. I don't know if you can just make that out or not. But one coin is slightly thicker than the other. So, would you like to hazard a guess as to which one is real and which one is fake? Now, there's a few tests you can do, and I'm going to show you those in a moment. But the most simple test you can do is this. It's a simple magnet. Now, most of the fake gold coins out there will stick to a magnet, but not all. Some are on brass or non-ferrous metal, which is not magnetic. So, we go to this side, nothing at all. 22 karat gold has no metallic properties whatsoever. Now we'll try this one. That is your first tester, but it's not the only test, and it isn't a foolproof test. If it sticks to a magnet, it's 100% not right. Just because it doesn't stick to a magnet doesn't mean it is right. So we've already looked at visual inspection. We know this one was a bit thicker than this one. Uh, diameter, they were the same size. It is still a very nice milled coin. It's really good quality with good detail. Under an eyeglass, you wouldn't suspect that as being fake. The next thing you should do is buy yourself one of these. Little jewellery scales. These are less than £10 to buy, and if you're interested in buying gold, I suggest you buy them. Okay, so you can see here we got the scales, they've been zeroed. Now, we know this is the real coin, this is the fake. Now, a real full sovereign will weigh 8 grams, a half sovereign will weigh 4 grams. You've got to allow maybe a point of a gram. Now this one's dead on 8.0, but the scales are not always accurate. Sometimes it could be 8.01 or something like that, or 8.1 or 7.99. There's always going to be a tiny discrepancy depending on your weighing scales. But there you go. 
There you go, it's only 0.2 now. So, there you go, zero. 8.2 by there now, whereas a moment ago it was 8. So you've got to allow just the tiniest of fraction, okay? However, watch the difference now. Same size sovereign, actually thicker than the gold sovereign. And the reason is they're trying to make it feel a little bit heavier. Oh, there's the point two, huh? So it was coming in at 8 grams, so we zeroed the scales. Look at the difference. That's supposed to be a full sovereign. It comes in at 5.2 grams. And the reason behind that... The reasoning behind the difference in weight is 22 karat coal gold has a much greater density than whatever metal they're using. Now we know this is a ferrous metal, so maybe there's bits of iron or whatever in there to make it stick to the magnet. It is a very nicely milled coin. It is a good looking coin. You wouldn't tell it apart. I'm gonna put in some photographs for you uh, towards the end so you can see the two of them and you really won't be able to tell the difference just off the photograph. They really are good. So, first is magnet. Will, will it stick to a magnet or not? Now, just because it doesn't stick to a magnet still doesn't make it real. But if it sticks to a magnet, it's definitely not real. If you got a sovereign you know is genuine, compare it for the thickness. There is a millimeter difference in the thickness. Diameter is the same. There are other ways of telling, and that is by using acid. Now, I'm an antique dealer, so I have acid in my shop regular. Um, you can buy a bottle of this 9 karat gold testing acid for £6 or £7 on eBay. Now, I understand that gold sovereigns are 22 karat, so why would I test with 9 karat? A 9 karat gold acid has no reaction whatsoever on the 22 karat gold. It doesn't leave a single mark, doesn't even react, it's just like water sitting on there. But yet, if you put 9 karat gold acid on a fake coin, it will froth up green. The, you have different um, carat acids to tell you so you can test the different carat of the gold. But we're not interested in that. All we want to know is, is it gold or is it fake? If it's testing as gold, then we know it's got to be 22 because it is a sovereign. If it's frothing up green, we know it's fake. So that's another way. Now I'm going to show you how to do a little simple gold test in just a moment. I'm not going to test this coin. I'm going to test another little bit of uh, rolled gold for you to show you the reaction. Purely because uh, my future daughter-in-law is going to have this for her collection just has a filler coin. She's well aware it's not gold, but it will still look good in her case and be a nice pretty coin for her to look at. And she loves just looking at the coins. So I'm not going to test the coin because it will discolour and take the gold plating off the coin. And I don't want to do that. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to put gold on the real sovereign. And I'm going to put gold on the cross. So you can actually see the reaction the gold does. Or the acid does. This is a simple test. I've actually done videos on how to test silver, how to test gold. Step by step showing you how to do it is so easy. But if you're testing a coin, it's just simple. Give it a little file and put the acid on there. I'm going to show you how to test with the acid. Right now, it is so simple. And for £6, if you want to buy sovereigns, then or Cougarand or whatever coin, gold coins you want, because they don't come with hallmarks, and they can fake hallmarks too. Okay, so I got some gold plate, and I've got some, uh, and they got the gold sovereign. Now, you can see the gold plate isn't sticking to the magnet. Up there it is, but the gold plate down here isn't, as is the sovereign isn't. So, I'm going to drop some acid on both, and you're going to see the reaction. So you can see a pool of acid there on the sovereign, and the acid there on the gold plate. Now, if I was to do this on the coin, do you see all this green frothing up around it? Look at all that green. The Sovereign has zero R reaction at all. 
and if I filed into this gold, it'd be even more. These files come with the gold testing. So what have we learned? Well, what we've learned is multiple very easy ways to detect fake gold and real gold. You've got the weight. Very important is the weight. Buy yourself a set of jewellery scales and they're less than a tenner and weigh the gold. Now, it don't matter. If the gold is the right size, it will never be the right weight because it doesn't matter what material they use, it is not going to have the same density as 22 karat gold. So if it's the same size, it is never going to weigh 8 grams. Plain and simple. Um, check the quality. They're not all going to be of this quality. Use a magnet. Very simple. This magnet and the file I bought with the gold acid. It was a little optional extra. Um, come in for like a pound or two extra for the magnet and the file. And all you do, you literally grab it and you give it a little file like that on the surface. Gold plate is very, very thin. You got like less than a millimeter of gold plate around it. So once you give it a little scratch on that surface, you're breaking through the gold plate. And then the acid can really eat into that base metal and froth up green. Now you saw it just on the surface there on that gold plate. If I'd filed into it, you'd have this big froth. Uh, again, you can see that on the gold and silver testing videos I've done to show you uh, step by step. Now this is very easy. Anybody of any level can do this. Um, walk around with a magnet. If you go around car boot sales and things like that, put a magnet in your pocket because if anybody's going to sell a fake, it's going to be at a car boot sale or an antique fair or a flea market where they can sell it to you and go and never come back. So unless you want to get caught, if you want to buy gold sovereigns, take a magnet, take a weighing scales. Um, if you're dead serious, get yourself some acid. Many a time I've said, I've been at an antique fair and I've said to the dealers, you know, I've bought bangles with like 10 and 15 sovereigns on and I've said to them plain and simple, I want to drop a bit of acid on them all. They know there will be zero reaction um, off a sovereign if it's genuine. So none of them have ever had a problem with me using the acid. But there's three or four very simple um, inspections. Visual, magnetic, weight, and acid. Very, very simple. And it's as easy as that. You know, if it passes all them tests, the odds are it's a genuine sovereign. And what are sovereigns worth? At the moment, somewhere around 300 pounds scrap value for a full sovereign. That's not bad money, is it? And you wonder why they're faking them. I almost got caught with this one. Uh, this week, he brought her in with a job lot of other coins and he knew what he was doing. That's why I've done this video to show you how, how good the fakes are. I'll splice in photographs again at the end for you to see just how good these fakes are. Stay safe. Be sensible with the buy-in. If you're finding a coin in a car boot sale for a pound, don't be uh, drawing attention to it, just buy it. But if someone wants money for a sovereign, you make sure you're protected. Bye for now.